Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at YourInspirations.com. Today we're going to do the Trisha Tree Skirt and this is actually featuring Peyton's classic wool worsted but we're gonna be switching our yarns today in order to match our crochet along and we're gonna be suggesting carrying one pound or equivalent yarn that you can find. I'm also gonna stick with the same size crochet hook of five millimeter as it states. That's a size H if you're in the US. So what we have today is that this here is made up of different motifs. They are not square. You may think that they are but they're not and here is all the color breakdowns if you'd like to be very strategic. Mine is completely random and I used yarn left over from my boho ornamental afghan and you can use leftover yarns for this as well. It's very homey when it's done. So let's take a look a closer at this pattern and let's decipher it together. On page number three of the instructions you can see how these are working together. All 12 motifs. There is a split right down this, uh, the middle here so that it's completely you can just wrap it around your tree without having to take your tree down. So you can just see there there's a buttons that are there. I'm kinda lazy. I wouldn't put buttons on mine just cause I'm lazy. But you can put buttons in order to secure that if you wish if you got pets or kits that are going underneath your tree. So there's a total of 12 of these motifs going around. You're gonna get those done and put them together. Sew them together with an invisible join that I'll show you. And then we're gonna come back then in the second clue and fill in this space in the middle in order to fill it back out to the trunk of the tree. So we have two sets of diagrams that are available to you. We have this one here. This does not look like it's perspective. This is because the stitches are different. In order to get this to join together to be a round circle they're done up on a slight angle and when you get 12 they form the circle. Then this diagram here is the remaining of filling in the shapes as you go in order to get that done. Let's take a closer look at the actual um, um, a sample of one of the motifs and then I'm gonna have a breakdown for you that I think is easy for you to understand too. So here's an example of one of the motifs and I'm gonna be crocheting the last one number 12 with you on camera and then what you need to do is just sew these together on the side. So I got some suggestions for changes of this particular pattern and one of the changes I'm going to suggest to you, do you see how it naturally rounds off right here? I'm going to suggest to you when you go to sew these together to stop right here on this chain one space when you go to join them together. When you do that it causes it to nicely come out on the end. I actually went and I took it all apart because I went right to the edge like so and when I went right to the edge watch what happens. It folds up. So this is probably because it's carrying one pound yarn. So what I'm suggesting to you there's a few changes that I'm gonna make to you today. So one of them I would sew only to the spot and let it kind of like pedal out and then the other one I would do is chain three right on the very uh, corner here. This is the last time around and when you chain three it just causes it to relax even more. So that's uh, two of the changes. The third change is actually in the final border that goes all the way around and we'll cover that when we get there. Let's take a look at the diagrams and let's show you how easy it is to follow those. So I blew up the diagram. That's why it's kind of granular. So just making sure that you understand that is a perspective here. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna start off and every time we come down either side it's an easy thing to remember. So you're going to start off normally as the first two rounds of a typical granny square and then in the third round what's gonna happen is that when we start up here there's gonna be half double crochets and then what I decided to do is highlight, I highlighted the half double crochets that you can see how there's consistency in growth. And so then you have double crochet, then you got double crochets and then treble crochets. And so I highlighted those as I went. So if you can remember the order of those they're a lot easier to do these particular squares. At the base of these ones here there's always going to be um, trebles when you uh, get past on round number three. So there will always be trebles. So this side is growing out for faster than this side because that's half double crochets. So think about as a mirror. So what happens on this side happens on the other. So for, let's just say for example we on round three we know that we started with the a half double crochets right here in the corner. Then we went to doubles and then trebles. When we come to the other side we know that there's trebles and then doubles and then half. And if you can remember the stitch counts as far as like how many groups that you need to do. So on round number four you can see that you have two groups of halves one double, one treble. And when you come to the other side you got one treble, one double and two halves. If you, if that's easier for you to remember that's how I did it. I also marked up this diagram for sewing. So I only sewed until the chain one space right here uh, on both sides as they join. Remember that you're not gonna join everything together. You're gonna leave one uh, particular one open. So that's the open slit of your skirt. I also I told you that I made a change. On the final round we're going to chain three instead of two and this will open it up even further 
for your convenience. So without further ado we're gonna start off in round number one go all the way to round number eight here on camera. I'm going to show you how to do the invisible join and then that'll be it for today. So let's get started. So let's begin we're going to create a slip knot. This is an intermediate level because of the complexity of the granny square being kind of in perspective. It's not just straight up uh, regular granny square. So we're gonna chain up four. So one, two, three, and four and I want you to insert the hook into the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling it through and through to form the center ring. So keep this color and we're now gonna progress into round number one. So we're gonna start off with it and we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. That counts as a double crochet and in the same center join just put the straggler around the outside so it catches it. Put in two more double crochets into the ring. So we have one, and two. Then we're gonna turn a corner. So every th all corners on this except for the very final where I showed you that they're gonna chain three is always gonna be chain two. Now you come back into the ring put three more double crochets. So one, two, and three. Then turn the corner again so chain two and put in three more double crochets into the ring. So one, two and three. Chain two and do the final side so there's gonna be three double crochets again. So one, two, and make room if you don't, if you don't have enough room so just pull it and three and to finish off this round chain two and slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and then you're done this color. So what you can do with this particular um, project is that you don't have to use a, a tapestry needle too often only when you're sewing them together but just wrap it around and pull through and I want you to weave it through this stitch work here and get that really stuck into position. So then when you go over this corner you'll be able to get it stuck in there again. Let's move along to round number two. Let's get our next color. Create a slip knot first. It'll get stuck better and you are going to go into the first so this is where we st uh, stopped last time. So we're gonna go right here into this corner. You can choose pretty much any corner but that's what it's suggesting. So you're gonna pull through with a slip stitch and then chain three and then what you want to do is that you want to put in two more double crochets there. So rounds one and two are typical for granny square. There's nothing special about those. Once you get your, your three in there so the chain three plus the two counts as three chain two and then three more double crochets into the same corner. Noticing that I'm going right up over top of the straggler. You chain one in between any of the groups that you will have all throughout this whole project. Then move to the next one happens to be a corner so there will always be three double crochets, two chain, three double crochet. So what I want you to do is I want you to do that for the remaining of this round and then just make sure that you chain one in between the groups. Okay so the, so in the corners it would always be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, then chain one to jump to the next group which happens to be a corner and do the same thing. Please do that same thing all the way around for round number two. Once you get the last one in there make sure you chain one before joining it to the top of the first chain three and then I want you to finish off this yarn weaving your ends kind of how I showed you already and let's get ready for round number three. So let me give you a piece of advice before we really get started. So my point being for speed is all about assembly line. So a car gets made faster when multiple people in, uh, are involved and it works its way down the line. What I'd recommend to you is do each one of these sections like an assembly line. So go and do all 12 of the middles and then when you go and get that done then do the second round for all of the 12 and then get that done and then keep on moving. The reason for it is that you have a set of instructions. It's easier to remember when you're working like that than it is to go and do one of these because you'll be constantly looking at the sheet if you go constantly from one middle to the end and then have to keep it repeating. So if you go section by section within each of the uh, motifs it's easier and faster. So let's review round number three. We're going to start off right in the corner. So you see how we're always moving in this corner now and what we're going to do is chain two counts as a half double crochet and then we're gonna half double crochet that complete corner. The next group after you chain one will be uh, 
double crochets, chain one and then this corner will always be then trebles. Then so three trebles, two chain, three trebles. These will always be trebled down and then you're coming back around and you're gonna do opposite. So these will be trebles cause they match. This one here will be double and then a half will match all the way around. So please do that for round number three. Let's begin. So let's begin round number three. Going to create a slip knot to begin. Technically I'd be weaving in my tails as it's going. I'm just a little lazy today. Well just I haven't done it yet. So I want to start off in the corner and I'm just gonna pull through and then we're gonna chain two counts as a half double crochet and th two more half double crochets in the same corner. So one and two. Then we're gonna turn the corner so chain two and then put two more half or three more half double crochets in the same corner. So three halves. Like that. So now we're gonna move our way down. So chain up one. The next one will be a, a set of doubles. So there'd be three doubles. So one, two, and three. Chain one and then you're at the next corner. So these ones are gonna be trebles. So you wrap the hook twice and put in three trebles first. Then chain two and then three more trebles. Okay, so I'm gonna explain the remaining of this round. So make sure you chain one after. So the base of this side here will be three trebles, chain one. The next corner is the exact same. So think of it like a mirror. So these will be two, uh, three trebles, chain two, three trebles. The next one will be a double because it matches. And then the final corner will be uh, three halves, two chain, three halves, and then chain one and then three halves here and then join. So please do that the remaining for round number three. So I just completed exactly what I shared with you. So you're gonna start seeing now it coming out. The side will be bulging a little bit more. You got your halves on this side, chain one and then join it to the top of the first chain two and get rid of this yarn and let's move on to round number four. Okay, are you getting scared yet? Hope not. We're now moving on to round number four. So what we have is that we're gonna start off in the corner. It'll be half double crochets like you did before and then there will be another group of half double crochets then a double and then you're in the next corner. So you'll have your trebles then around here and then coming back the other side there's one set of doubles and then a uh, half and then you end up with your corner again and then your halves across the top. Let's try number four. So let's try number four just starting off with a slip knot and let's go right in the corner. So we're gonna start off chain two or uh, slip stitch to first to join, chain two and then two more halves in there. So then that chain two plus these two halves give you your three that you need. Chain two to turn and then three more halves into that same one. You'll notice that I got rid of my tails between the last take and this take so that's good. So chain one to jump. So the next one is going to be a half. So a group of half, so three halves. And then we're gonna get slightly bigger. So chain up one. The next group is doubles. So three doubles. Just assume when I say doubles there's a set of three. And then we jump, chain one and now we're into the corner. So those will be trebles. So those will be three treble, chain two, three treble. So this causes it to grow itself. Just as a, a, a kind of a meaningless thought. So I actually crocheted this twice and I crocheted all 12, all 11 because I was gonna do 12 on camera and because I'd blown up the um, sheet and I wasn't wearing my good glasses. I actually did this whole bottom section as doubles instead of trebles and then I realized it wasn't making any sense in the end after I finished. So here's what we have. So you're going to then just come across the bottoms with trebles. Then you, you'll put your corners in there. Three treble, chain two, three treble and then do what is opposite. So you got a, a, a double and then you'll have a half. You got your half corners. So your three halves, two chain, three halves and then coming along here with just half double crochets. Please do that for the remaining of round number four. So I'm coming up to the end of round number four, chain one and slip stitch to the beginning, chain two. 
So you can see that we have one, two, three, four is done and you can see it's starting to bulge even more at the base and we're going to get rid of this yarn and let's move on to round number five together. So here we go for round number five. We're gonna start off in the same. We're gonna put our half corners so you, like we did before. The next one will be half like it was before and this time there will be two groups of double crochets in a row and then you hit this corner. You go across with your trebles and then again the opposite subtract right so it's just the other side. There will be two groups of doubles, two groups of halves that you have here which is part of your corner over here and then you move on to your halves then on the outside. So let's begin round number five. So round number five we're gonna just start off with a slip knot. I'll take you down the one side. So joining in the corner, just slip stitch it to fasten on and chain two counts as a half and then two more halves in there. So by this time you should be an expert of your corners here at the starting. Chain two and then three halves. So let's review on going down on round five. Chain one to jump. So the first two in a row will, be, or sorry, for the next one will be a, um, a half double crochet. Okay, and chain one and then the next two that you have will each be doubles. So one, two, three, chain one and then the next one is also doubles. And then you're gonna hit your corners. So chain one, so the corners will be the same, will be your trebles. Continue to treble around the other side. This side you'll do your trebles in the corner. Your first two groups here will be a double and then this will be a half and then your corner will be half, chain two halves and then your half along the base. This is for number five. Please continue the same pattern going all the way around. Coming up to the end of round number five, just chain one and then just slip stitch it to the first uh, top of the chain two. So let's, that's it for number five. Get rid of this yarn and you can really start seeing it working out now. Let's begin round number six. So let's begin round number six. We're gonna start off in the same corner. Still do your halves. The next one is still a half double crochet. The next two in a row are then doubles. The next one is then treble by itself as you see and then you hit your corners. So then you're coming across and then once you finish your final corner the next group is a treble, two doubles and then you have a half by itself and then your final corner of half, chain two, halves and then you half then across. Let's begin round number six. And let's begin round number six. Coming into the corner just attach like you always have been. Chain two and two more halves. So one, two, chain two and three halves. Just as a point of reference when I say halves it means half double crochet. I do have some crocheters that prefer that I don't use that. They, I used a full name but when you're doing the same kind of stuff all the time it's just easier to say it simpler. So chain one and the next one will be a group of halves, half double crochet. Okay, chain one and then the next one is going to be doubles. So the next two in a row are doubles. Chain one after those, don't forget. And then another group of doubles. chain one. Okay, we still have a corner over here but the one in between is a group of trebles. I've never ever seen a granny square do this before until I saw this pattern. It's kinda neat. So chain up one and then you hit your corners as you normally do it. You're gonna treble along the base and then when you come back the other side the first one is gonna be treble. The next two will be doubles and then you'll end up with a half and then you'll hit your corner with the halves as you know it and then half across the top. Please do this for round number six. Finishing up round number six, chain one and then just join to the beginning, chain two. Get rid of this yarn and let's move on then to round number seven. We're almost done and let's continue to seven. Okay, we're now on to round number seven. You're just gonna grab another color. Start off in the corner and then again you got one group of half by itself. You then have three groups of doubles and then one group of trebles and then your corner. So you're gonna treble along here. One group of trebles, three groups of halves, 
one sorry three groups of doubles and then one group of halves and then your corners and then coming back. So this is number seven. Again really quite straightforward to follow. Let's begin round number seven. I'm being uh, transparent. This is very random my whole uh, project is. So I'm gonna introduce this blue back in. It's not planned. It's just I just was easier to my hands. So we're just gonna join it. Chain two counts as a half and then put in two more halves. Chain two and three halves to finish this corner. Okay, so let's uh, work our way down the side. So chain up one. The first one is a group of halves. Okay, chain one. The next three in a row will each be groups of doubles. So one, two and three. Chain one and do another one. Okay, chain one and do another one. Chain one. So the next one is then treble. It's a group of trebles. And then chain one. So the remaining then is your corner will each be and these will all be trebles. Coming back down the other side you'll have one group one group of trebles. Three in a row for doubles. One half. Then you have your half corner and then you're going to do your halves along the base here. So let's uh, get round number seven done and then round number eight is your final. So I'm coming up all the way back around and just chaining one, join. So now we're gonna move on to round number eight. Remember that I have a small alteration that is in there and uh, I decided to make my um, round number eight the same color for all of them. That's completely up to you. So let's move on there. So in round number eight I decided to make them all white as the final border and I just felt that it was working better for me. So in the original sample it doesn't have all the outside of the of of round eight being the same color. So that's completely your call to your creativity. You can decide to do whatever you want. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off down the side. Just remember that there's an alteration right here at the bottoms. I want you to chain three instead of two. This will open it up a little bit more and have it sit flatter easier for you especially because you're, you're switching your, your yarn. You're gonna start off as regular for half double crochets or sorry as single crochets starting off and then we're gonna do two halves in a row, two doubles in a row, two trebles in a row and then your corners coming across, two trebles, two doubles, two halves and then your final corner is three singles, chain two, three singles and singles with the, in the groups then all the way on the other side. Let's begin the final round number eight. Let's begin round number eight. I know white might be hard to see because I have a white background but it is what it is. So we're gonna go into the first corner to attach it like you normally have been slip stitch. Just chain one only this time and I want you to put in three single crochets in a row. So one, two and three. Chain two to turn and then in the same corner I want you to put in three single crochets again. So one, two and three and then chain one. So let's work our way down the first side. So the first one is going to be a group of halves. Then chain one. The next group is a halves. So there's two groups of halves in a row. Chain one. The next two groups in a row will be each doubles. And then the next two groups after this will be trebles. Not a lot of people love trebles but in this case it's totally required. So then there's two groups of trebles here at the end. And then we're gonna hit our bottom corner. Okay, so chain one. So okay, so you're gonna have your corners as you normally do. Let me just uh, verify that um, you do that change. So we're gonna start our first side of the corner. So three trebles first. 
I originally had it chaining two following the instruction but because I substituted the yarn um, it doesn't want it to sit down on its own. So chain three this time and then coming in to the same one and put in three more trebles. So on these bottom corners put in chain threes at the end or in the middle of the corners so it'll, it'll sit better for you. So you can actually sit it down. See how it sits flat? With chaining a two then it starts to really pull. So then you continue along the base here. So you're gonna do your trebles across then in your corner your trebles and chain three trebles and then your first two are trebles, the next two are doubles, the next two are halves and then you'll end up with your three singles and then chain two, three singles and then you put your single crochets in the in the, the base here with chain ones that separate them. So please do your final round and we'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm just coming up all the way around chain one and slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So if it's starting to buckle up on you don't worry about it yet. You have to pull on it a little bit and also I told you that I changed the outside perimeter. Um, I haven't shared that information with you yet. We'll cover that in the next video and what we're going to do is that that's gonna force what if it's sitting up a little bit to totally sit on down. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to cover you then. So just give it a pull. Just give it a stretch. Let me just zoom out a little bit and just give it a good see. It's awesome. See, sitting flat. It's awesome. So what we want to do is that we want to join it to the neighbor. So let's uh, bring back our sheet and then we're going to, sh I'm gonna show you how to do the invisible join so it looks pretty seamless. So this is what the skirt looks like without the tree in the middle of course. So what we're going to have you do is a join your 12 motifs together but you're gonna leave one join completely open so that it's here and you see, you will see that there's buttons. So when I go to look at it from my perspective of my homework we're just going to attach. So what I told you is that we're going to change exactly where we're gonna do the sew. So you'll notice that the original here doesn't really have that jetting out so much but what I found with myself using Karen one pound that it um, can fold up on you. So what I decided to do is only sew during a portion of it. So if I look at the other sheet I'm going to go to this chain one space right here and I'm only gonna sew this layer leaving the corner completely exposed. This will create a nice pedaling effect. I am also then change the outside perimeter here that there's a slightly different stitch count to get it to also wanting to sit down flat. So it's you know you gotta do what you gotta do in life right. So what we want to do is that we wanna put these together as a nice seamless join there that's not raised it uh, at all and then when you look at it from a perspective it looks like it totally belongs because it does. So let's uh, show you how to do the invisible join. So grabbing a yarn that you would like to join. I'm gonna use white so it's totally invisible when I go to do it meaning that it will be totally hidden and what I want to do is create a slip knot on the one side but leave a long enough tail so that I can throw that through a tapestry needle at the end. Take the other side and throw it into the tapestry needle itself. So what I want to do is that I want to join these two and I've already shown you and talked about it a few times. I'm only gonna go to this chain one space. It's just before this corner starts and so this is from here to here is where it's gonna join and then these will be exposed leaving a petal shape. But I'm gonna start on the other side. So we're gonna start right in the chain two space at the corner and go right into the other chain two space and just pull through but don't pull all the way through. Put this slip uh, knot onto the needle and pull it and it will trap it into position and I want you to lay down that straggler on top. So you're gonna advance to the next stitch and this first one go to the back stitch only noticing that I'm keeping that on top and then on this one here I'm going to the second one so it's just the back stitch on this one. So if you're doing that it creates an invisible join and I'm just gonna pull and it's gonna trap this starting strand into position as well. So then I advance to the next stitch. So back stitch or the back loop on this one and then the back loop on this one just directly across. Did I tell you it's called a whip stitch? If I didn't that's what it is. So then advance to the next stitch and next stitch And then what you want to do is that you are going to then uh, go to this. This is a chain one space but I still want you to go into a chain. I don't want you to go into the space and I want you to go into the back 
into that chain as well into this to the back one only. So keep that being very consistent. Okay, so what I want you to do, maintain your stitch work all the way down. Just keep matching it to each other. It gets easier as you do more of these. You get used to it and I want you to stop on this last space before the corners start. Please do that now. I'll see you at the end of this. So I'm just coming to the end of where I need to be. So I'm gonna go right into this chain one space stitch. So chain one and then the other side and then that's it. So watch what I do. I'm going to just take the hook or so the needle and just jump, jump down okay to the other side and turn it over. <laughs> jump down it. Okay so once we're in the back what I want you to do is just weave this yarn strand in a total of three times. So back once. Go a slightly different path in the other direction twice and then in the other direction third time is a charm. So catching it in three times makes it almost impossible to fall out. And then what I want you to do with the other starting strand I told you to leave it a little bit long. We were burying it as we were going because we left it on top and then I want you to take that remaining one and just go back in the direction you just came. And then you can get rid of that right into the project. So what I want you to do is that I want you to attach all your squares together and or all your motifs together and then when you come back then we're going to begin uh, starting the um, the inside to be able to fill this in and we'll also do the outside border as well in that time. So, so at this particular moment you will have what will be the final of all the, the 12 motifs. There will be a one that's not sewn here so that it's open. We're gonna do a final border today. I'm gonna have a slight change for you here. Yours may not be uh, sitting down completely at this time but my point being is the last round because I have an alteration it should sit down uh, finally if it's not already. What we're going to concentrate on today is is getting from the interior and making our way closer to the middle as we go to the stem of the trunk and then we're gonna come back later and then just do a perimeter around this whole thing. So without further ado let's uh, take a look at the diagram that's available to you and it's very strategic and we're gonna be counting stitches and being able to have a lot of fun today. So on page number three is the diagram and this is what it's gonna look like. So in gray here these are the motifs that already exist and we're gonna start on row number one and work our way across. It's very strategic and counting on how things come together and it's actually not hard and if you understand how, how to do it of a course. So without further ado what we're going to do is that I'm gonna take a blown up copy and then we're gonna work our way through rows number one through 14 getting ourselves all the way around. Once I get you started you're going to see how things are kind of related to each other and we first of all we have to get ourselves all the way around to get ourselves established. Let's take a look at the blown up copy now. So on page number three this is a copy of what it looks like. There is a crochet key as well as far as what all the symbols mean and you will have access to that. So we're gonna start off right in the very edge. So these two pieces here are not joined. See how there's a dotted line there? That's telling you that the invisible join is there. So that we're gonna start right in an open space and we're gonna start right on the right hand, uh, right side so with, with it facing up. So what we're going to then be doing uh, from this particular moment is that we are just gonna get ourselves established but look Look how, where we're gonna go the first time is that we are going to do these cluster work right as in the join itself. So right in the spaces as we go. So it's telling you and showing you that it will repeat again. So you're basically filling in spots with double crochets and you'll notice that there is no chain ones anymore as we begin to do that uh, except for in certain strategic areas. But uh, basically between these uh, ones that you have there is none. So we're going to begin to start on round number one. Again my coloring is completely uh, just random and you can decide what's right for you. So let's begin uh, row number one. So let's get ourselves started with our first color. You can go any color that you wish. I'm gonna just go for yellow because it's most convenient for me. So what I'm gonna do is go right into the chain two space. Okay this side is not joined to anything so it's the open one. It's also the right side facing up so it's the good side facing up. And we are just gonna join with a slip stitch like so and then we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four. So that will count as a double crochet and chain one space. You're now gonna jump to the next space right here and you are gonna put in groups of three double crochets. So all the groups are pretty much three double crochets except for when we're going to be in between the motifs and we're gonna start decreasing it in order to keep that round circle moving. 
So we're not going to chain one at all. In between these groups just continue to put three double crochets in each of the spaces up until you get to the joining of the two and then I'm going to then get you to do the rest of the perimeter or around as far as getting it all the way back to the other side. So I'll see you at the join next. So I'm coming into the space just before I get to where the motifs join and you're gonna do this every time when you're getting in between the motifs. So what you're going to do is chain one first and you're going to put the two uh, chain two spaces together as a cluster. Watch how you do that. So you're gonna wrap the hook and then you're gonna go into this, the first chain two space, pull through two and hold it. Wrap again, going into the same one, pull through, pull through two and hold it but you're not done. You're gonna come to the other chain two space on the next motif, wrap and into the next one, pull through two and hold and then do that again. So wrap and then in the next one pull through, pull through two and hold. You now have five loops on your hook. Wrap and pull through all five and then chain one and then begin going to the next space and begin your three double crochets again. So the only time you're going to chain one this whole thing is when you're joining the two motifs with these clusters that you see. So you just continue to move across and then fill in your uh, spacing, the chain two spacings of the corners of the motifs as you hit them. So please do that for the remaining of this row. So I'm coming to the end of row number one. Now interestingly enough this whole project when we get here it's like candid camera how you have to move the typewriter back and it falls off the, <laughs> the falls off the desk. When we get to the end of this we go right back to the very beginning and start again and going in the same direction. So we do that for all of the rows. We're always starting in the same side. So I'm just filling in the spaces as we know it and I'm going to join you at the beginning of each row and the ending of each row and you fasten off at the end of this row as well. So I got the last space filled in but you're not quite done. So what you just need to do is go to the last chain two space and fill it in with the double crochet and now you're done. So just weave in your ends and just uh, fasten off and then what we want to do is go back to the very beginning of this where we started again and just start then row number two and I'm gonna uh, weave that in better later. So we just go back to all the way to where we had started and keeping on the right hand side we want to begin all over again. Let's begin row number two. We're going to start where we started the yellow before and we're going to stay on the right hand side and continue. So we're going to go right into this chain uh, space here, the chain one space. I'd go right into the chain one itself. So it was three uh, chains and then there was the fourth one which is the chain one at the top. So go right into the chain itself to join and then that will help it stay stabilized as well. And you're going to chain three. So one, two, three and then in the same space then apply two more double crochets. So that helps to keep it more anchored. Now what you're going to do is that this one is a very quick and easy uh, row. As we progress more and more less spaces become uh, become available so it gets faster and faster. It's like corner to corner you're already at the, the big side working your way narrow. So just jump to each space uh, and put in three double crochets all the way across. So there's no reduction of stitches required for this particular row. And then once you get to the area where you joined your motifs, how you did these clusters, you just simply just use the spacing that's on either side. So just one uh, uh, grouping of three double crochets in each one. Remember there's no chain ones in this particular part of the pro project at this point. So just uh, keep doing that all the way across. Let's see at the end of this row number two. I'm coming up to the end of round number two or row number two sorry and I want to make sure that I get all my stitches in and remember that there is going to be a standalone double crochet that's here. So you're just gonna go right into the space and apply three double crochets in there and then that's it. So then you're just gonna fasten off and then go back to the beginning on the other side again and then maybe back there and where you're going to start row number three. So let's begin row number three. We're going to start off in the top of the first double crochet that's there or the first chain and add another chain three and we're going to put six standalone groups of double crochet to get our in a row and then the next two spaces become this cluster like we did down here. So these next two spaces come together. Don't forget the chain one in between the clusters and then you do another six. So one, two, three, four, five, six and then another cluster and you keep doing that all the way across for row number three. Let's begin. Okay let's begin row number three. 
just creating a slip knot to begin and go in the top of the first chain three right there and join it with a slip stitch and then chain another um, three. So one, two, three. We're now gonna go to the next chain space or sorry the next space here and we're going to apply uh, three double crochets in the space. So for this one plus the next five so there's a total of three groups of double crochet in a row then you then do the, the decrease. So let's just do these um, six. So that's one group. There's two This is three. It's four. Okay, five. And six. So six double crochet groups before you do the cluster to bring two together. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the next two spaces are gonna come together it, with that, with the cluster. So you're gonna chain one first and wrap the hook and going into the next space, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap the hook again, same space, pull through, pull through two and hold. Okay, come to the next space, so wrap, next space, pull through, pull through two and hold, wrap, next space, pull through, Pull through two and hold. You have your five loops back on your hook, pull through all five, then chain one and then begin again. So the next six in a row will be like this and then the next two then will come together with these clusters. Please do that all the way across for row number three. Coming up to the end of row number three, so I got my two, uh, my clusters in here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six and I'm not quite done yet so I gotta do the seventh space in there. Okay, so there's no clustering at the end of row number three. Once you get that one done, then just double crochet into the top of the final stitch and then you're good to go. So what we're now going to do is just fasten off and then go to the beginning of row number four on the other side of the project. Let's go back there now and let's begin to decide what we're gonna do next, number four. So let's begin row number four. We're going to start at the top of the other chain here and just put our uh, three sti uh, stitches in there. So chain three counts as one and the two you got your three and all you're just going to do then in this uh, particular row is as put three uh, double crochets in each one of the spaces all the way around. That includes the ones that are in, on the opposite sides of these clusters that you did. Nice simple uh, row number four. Let's begin number four just grabbing a random color and I'm just gonna go in the top of the first chain three that you had started with before and I'm just gonna slip stitch it so just slip it and then chain three counts as a double crochet and in this one just go in this gapping space and put two more double crochets in. Now this one row number four is just easy just go into each one of these spaces okay that includes on the opposite sides of the cluster so one and just put in your groups of three double crochets all the way across. That is number four. I'll see you at the end of number four. I'm coming up to the end of row number four and just finishing it off. Round number, uh, row number five is actually pretty easy coming ahead too. So I'm just going right into the final spaces that you can see. Okay and then you're going to come into the final space that you have over here and put in three double crochets. Now you're just gonna finish that off and we're going to progress to row number five. Five is an easy one. We just gotta watch the way that we start and the way that we end the row. So everything else in between is exactly what you just did here. So let's go back let's restart ourselves on the other side and go to number five. So number five we're going to chain four right from the start and then we're going to put the next two spaces together with the cluster and then everything else is just like you just did in row, row number four and then finally when we come back around the last two spaces that are available will become the cluster and then you'll just put in a double crochet right in the end. So f uh, five is pretty easy too. So let's begin number five. Okay let's begin row number five. We're just gonna start off with the slip knot as always. We're gonna come in the top of the first chain three and you're gonna slip stitch. We're now gonna chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four 
and then we're going to come to the next space and those that space and the next one after it will become together. So just wrapping and do your cluster. Okay and then come to the next one and do the same thing. And then you wanna pull through all five loops, pull together and then chain one. So the, all the remaining except for the very final two on the other side of this will just be what you already know. So just jump over and fill all the spaces in with uh, three double crochet groups all the way. I'll see you at the end of this row and we will do that cluster thing once again at the end. So I'm coming across on row number five and I'm being very conscious to look for the last two spaces. So these two is what I'm going to be going for and I'm gonna make sure that I put them together as a cluster. So that was a nice easy row to go. So I think they have you doing this in the uh, in the skirt so that I can have time to relax the stitches and uh, that's pretty neat. So the next two, the final two spaces are gonna be come together. So you're gonna put those together as a cluster. Come to the next one. Pull through all five loops, chain one and then you're gonna do one double crochet in the top of the last double crochet that's there. You're gonna fasten off and we're gonna go back to the beginning again the other side and start row number six together. So in row number six we're going to start up on the top of the first uh, in the chain three there. There's four there. Go to the third one we're gonna start and then the next uh, five in a row are each the, the regular double crochets and then the next two spaces are gonna become a, clus a cluster. So remember how last time there was six down here. This time there's only gonna be five. So there'll be five double crochet cl uh, uh, sections and then it will be a cluster. So five and then cluster and etc. So let's do row number six. Let's begin row number six. We're going to join to the third one up of that chaining of four. Okay, so just count one, two, three. Okay, so there's a chain one space and then the, the cluster. So we're going to start there. Just join with the slip stitch and then chain three counts as a double crochet and you're going to double crochet into the space itself two more times. So by going to the third, sorry, by going to the third chain let me just restart that one. Just by going to the third chain it helps anchor it better. So we're just gonna add our two double crochets to give us a total of three. So now the next five are going to be by themselves. So they're just a double crochet. They are in the groups of double crochets. So let's count those out together. So this will be one. This is two. three, that's four, and five. So five groups of double crochet in a row and then we're gonna cluster the next two spaces. So just chain one first, go into the next space and do your cluster work, jump to the next space, pull through all five loops, chain one and then begin again. So the next five in a row are the groups of double crochet and then cluster after that. Please do that all the way across. You're probably noticing that you're getting faster because you are eliminating out stitches as you can see. Let's begin to continue the rest of row number six. I'm coming up to the end of round number six and I just left my last cluster there behind us and uh, there is no more between now and the end. Okay, I'm almost done this side so just in case you need orientation of where I am. The next uh, round I, t I did look ahead. Um, we're just going on either side of the these clusters that you see. And the next uh, round at number seven is really quite easy. So go into the last space that's available to you. Put in your three double crochets and then that's it. So just fasten off, get rid of this yarn and let's go back to the beginning of the other side and start round number seven. Let's begin round number seven. It's a simple round. It's just like it was before. So chain up three and then it's just gonna be putting in three double crochets into each of the spaces all the way around. There's no decreasing with clusters in this one. It's just all the way around as what you've done before. This is number seven. Let's begin round number seven and I'm just being random. I've already used purple. I've already used most of my colors already if not all. 
and I'm just going to join to the top of the first chain three and slip stitch it and then chain three counts as a double crochet and then you're just gonna come to the next space that's available to you and you're going to place in your three double crochets. So one, two, and three and you're just simply just gonna put on three double crochets in each of the spaces that see this cluster is just one on each side. So please do that all the way around. Please do that all the way across for row number seven. I'm coming up to the end of row number seven and I'm just filling in the spaces. I've noticed that there is a mistake in the diagram on round number eight which I'll cover in just a moment. So I'm just filling in the spaces as I know it. So this is the last space to be filled in three double crochets and then you're just gonna double crochet in the top of the first, uh, the last stitch there and done. So let's get rid of this. Let's go to the diagram. I'm gonna show you where I think an error is based on the written instruction. They don't match with each other so I'm just gonna show that to you and we're gonna get off to a good start. So round number, or row number eight is next. Let's go back to the beginning. So back on the diagram we've just done number seven. So number eight we're gonna start off in the beginning and you're just gonna chain three, put your double crochets in and I want you to count the number of these. So there's one, two, three, and four and that's what it says in the instructions. Then a cluster. Then you have to put another four in a row. So, so go one, two, three, and four. This one here should be a cluster like you see here. So that I'm just gonna put C all. So that's in order to keep it in, th in balance. The reason why I believe that this one here has five. This one goes to four and then the next time you see this again it's in threes. See that? So I believe that's where the error is and uh, we will uh, ad address that now. And uh, for those that don't uh, hear this video you might wanna mention it on social media if people complain that row number eight is not matching the instruction. So without further ado let's go to number eight. Let's begin row number eight. You notice that we're getting quicker and we're just gonna go in the top of the first chain three that you did before and slip stitch it to join. And then chain three counts as a double crochet and in the space put in two more double crochet. So there is your balance. So what I want you to do, the next four are gonna be by themselves. So just continue three groups of double crochet. So one. Okay and then two. three and four. Just like that. Now the next two are gonna become the cluster. So chain one first and then jump to the next one and do the next one and you'll have five loops left on the hook and then chain one to finish. So the next four in a row will each be these double crochets and then another cluster and you're gonna do that all the way across for row number eight. So I'm just finishing up round our row number eight. I keep thinking it's round because it's a skirt and it goes around a tree. So there's my last cluster there. So the remaining all the way to the end will just be um, three, gr uh, three double crochet in each of the spaces. Okay and in the last one of the group of eight. So this is the last space here. So you're gonna go right in there. And then that's it. So get rid of this yarn. Let's go to number nine and begin all the way again. And let's do number nine. Back on the chart, number nine, we're gonna start up again, chain three of the other chain three that's there and we are going to then just put in double crochets in each one of the spaces in between. So there's no decreasing on this one. This is number nine. Start off with the slip knot and let's begin row number nine coming in the top of the other chain three that exists already. Slip stitch it to join. Chain three counts as a double crochet. And then number nine then we just jump to the next space that's available to you and put in your three double crochets. So each one of the spaces in between just put in your three groups of double crochet all the way across and I'll see you at the end of row number nine. So I'm coming up to the end of row number nine. 
Looking ahead row number 10 is exactly what we just did. So there's no decreasing. It's just gonna relax out and we're gonna do row number 10 next. We're just gonna go all the way to the end now. Row number 9. Okay, coming to the final space, put your three double crochet in and then just double crochet to the top of the last double crochet that's there. Let's get rid of this yarn. Let's go back to the beginning, row number 10 once again. Row number 10, we're just gonna check off. We did number nine and number 10, we're just gonna do things as we already see it. So it's just a matter of just filling in the spaces that are already there and then we're not doing any decreasing for row number 10. So let's begin that next. Let's begin row number 10 starting off with a slip knot and we're gonna come into the top of the first chain three. There's no decreasing on this round so just slip stitch it. Chain three counts as a double crochet and in the same space right below just put in two more double crochet. So there you got your three and then just simply all the way across three double crochets in each one of the spacing all the way. I'll see at the end of this. This is row number 10. And coming up to the end of row number 10 and I just put in my three double crochets in each space across and then you just gotta think about how you're gonna finish it. It shows it on the diagram too if you haven't already clued that in and you're just gonna go into the final space. It's the between the double crochet and the final um, three double crochet group and you're gonna put in your three double crochets there. That's it for this color. This is row number 10. Let's get rid of this. Let's go to number 11. We're getting closer to the end. So I'm back on the chart. We just completed number 10 and what I want to do then, I'm just gonna draw an arrow because it's getting further apart so I can see it and what I want to do is that I wanna make sure that I am starting 11 right. So we're gonna chain up three. We're gonna put the first two groups together and then it's one, two, three and then the next two are together with the cluster and then it's one, two, three. So do you see how I did that before it was four? So now it's three. So it's one, two and three. Please do that for round number 11. Let's begin. Let's start up row number 11. I keep saying round. I do apologize. I know somebody's gonna make a comment about that. <laughs> it just, it is, it's in my head. It's in my head that this is a circle because it goes around a tree. So we're just gonna join it and we're going to chain three, one, two and three and then we're gonna put the first two spaces together. So put, wrap and put those together as a cluster with the next one. Okay, you got your five loops, pull through all five and then chain one. So what we have here is that the next three in a row are each three double crochet. So one, two and three and then this is the second one group. This is the third group. And then the next ones are together. So chain up for uh, one first and then the next two spaces are going to be the cluster two together. So please do that same idea going all the way around, uh, across. Chain one after. So it's three by themselves, three groups of double crochet and then clusters. Please do that across for number 11. I'm coming up to the end of row number 11 just filling in all the spaces that I need. I just did, I came out of the cluster which was my last one and I'm just filling in the space. Interestingly enough, I as per the diagram, I ended up with an extra space. I'm not too worried about it. It could be an error in the diagram or it could be me. But either way, I am not frogging anything at this point. So once I get my last uh, item in there, I'm just going to just double crochet to the top. I think I'm not wrong. I can be wrong but I don't think I'm wrong. I'm going to stick with what I know and what I think is accurate. So this kind of makes sense because there's three double double crochets that kind of finish that off. Right? Okay. So let's move along to row number 12. Let's get rid of this yarn and start number 12. So let's begin row number 12 and I'm just gonna check off 11. We are just going to just put in uh, these three 
double crochets into each space. So we're gonna just come up onto the top. We're gonna go into the top of the, this uh, space here and then just in each space all the way around. Number 12, it's kind of easy. So let's get going and let's get started. So let's begin row number 12, slip knot. Let's come into the top here of section of the third one. And join it. You're going to chain three counts as a double crochet and in the same space I want you to place in two more double crochets. So go right into a space. Don't go into the top of the cluster. It looks like that in the diagram. I just think it's a visual thing. I don't think it's meant for you to do that. Okay, so let's uh, begin. We're gonna come to the other side of the cluster and you're gonna start putting in your three double crochets in each of the spaces uh, across. Okay, so even if you hit a cluster you're just gonna go on either side of it, right? So there and there and just put in uh, three double crochets in each space. So go in each space. This is row number 12. I'm coming up to the end of row number 12. Only two more rows to go. I bet you're happy about that. I know I am for sure. I'm ready to move on to something else. So I'm just filling in the spaces. Three double crochets in each. And then just come into the final one between the last double crochet and the last grouping of three in place in three double crochets. So that's it for that row. You're gonna finish that off. So let's get rid of that yarn. Let's go back to the beginning and go to row number 13. You'll like row 13 too. That's a no brainer. So let's go to row 13. We're gonna start off in the front and on the top of the chain three. Put another chain three and then just go into each space with three double crochets in each. Okay, one more row to after this. Let's go on for row number 13. Let's begin row number 13. Create a slip knot to begin. You're gonna come in the top of the first chain three that you started with. And then just slip, slip it to join. Chain three counts as a double crochet. Just come to the next chain space, or to the next space. Put in your three double crochets. So I want three double crochet in each one of the spaces all the way across for row number 13. So please do that now. I'll see you at the end of the row. So let's get all the way to the end of row number 13. Am I sounding tired? I've been in this chair all afternoon doing this project. Actually I like this project. I'm re really excited. I named this as my favorite tree skirt years ago and I just never found the time to actually do one. So I'm pretty excited actually to be honest with you even though I don't sound like it. <laughs> okay so you're gonna put it, uh, three double crochet in the last space that you have and then reach over to the top of the the last double crochet and put one in. So we're now gonna move on to round number 14. This is it my friends. This is gonna be the final of the interior and then we're gonna move on to the border next. So let's get rid of this and move on to 14. So row 14 is very similar to what we did in number 11. So there's gonna be one, two, three and then cluster of the two and then one, two, three cluster. We're gonna do that then for all the way for number 14. This is it for the interior. Let's begin row number 14. Round row <laughs> project. Okay, so let's come in the top of chain three. Just join it and chain three to start. That's your first double crochet. Come into the space right below it and just put in two more double crochets and therefore you got your three. Okay, so the next three in a row will each be by themselves. So let's do that. So we have one Okay, and then the next one, this is two. And finally three. And then the next two are gonna become to cluster. So chain up one and put the twos, the two of those together. You already kinda know what you're doing at this point, I hope. Pull through all five loops, chain one, and then the next three are by themselves and then cluster. Please do that all the way finally for round number 14. So I'm coming up to the end of 14 and I'm just putting in my last cluster there and I'm filling in the remaining spaces with three double crochet. Um, like before I have an extra space that I didn't, it's probably because I did something somewhere. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't want you to worry about it if you have that as well. At this point you just wanna get it done and get on with your Christmas, right? So just filling in the space and then coming into the last one right here. So what we're going to do is we're moving on to the border and in the border 
um, I'm gonna have an exception for you at the top end of when we were doing the granny squares way back when in video number one. So let's get rid of this and let's start on our border and it's gonna go completely around this whole thing. Okay, let's begin to do our border. It's a complete once around. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna start off in the middle and we're gonna put one single crochet in each. It doesn't matter which way you follow it really. And just come around. Actually it does. Stay on the right side of it and we're gonna come around. And then when you come down these edges, you just gotta evenly space your single crochets. So I'll just quickly get you started. I'll see you back here just to make sure you're spreading yourself out. And then I wanna show you the difference that's done on the tops here that I did to make sure that it sits down nice and flat. So let's uh, grab a yarn and let's start our final border. Okay, so I'm gonna start my final border and I'm starting right where I've been starting all this rest of this area down here. Okay, so I might as well keep it consistent, right? And I'm starting and I'm looking at the good side of the project, the right side. You're just gonna come in and in the corners what I want you to place is three single crochets anytime you turn a corner. This is an exception to the top of where it starts to do the, the um, uh, the nice looking petals. So just chaining up one and then single crochet three times. That'll allow you to turn the corner and when you come back all the way around you're gonna eventually come back along this edge that you've seen. So just gonna put in one single crochet in each going all the way to the other side and then I will see you there and make sure that you understand on spreading your stitches nice and evenly up the sides where there is no rows. Let's uh, meet you there in just a moment. To be completely transparent with you as you hit these clusters just go right into a space. It's almost virtually impossible to be able to separate those out from because it's tight. So just put one in the top of the cluster and one on each side of the space and continue to move around. That's what I would do for those particular spaces. So I've now almost finished the entire uh, interior perimeter and now I'm about to turn the corner to do the up the side. Now when you turn the side you are still gonna have all these double crochets. Let me just zoom out just to give you a better perspective of where I am. So I'm just coming along and before I turn the corner or at the corner I wanna put in three double crochets so I can safely turn. So one, two, and three. And notice that I have not trimmed my ends yet. I'm going to do that later. I'm gonna just bury them as I go. So I'm just gonna equally space these stitches. Don't go into a space go into like the sides of a post and just equally space it down. There's no counting involved. It's just eyeing it up and making sure that you go in. I'd recommend that you get at least two strands. Uh, you can get underneath two strands as you go and then continue to bury in these stragglers as you go too and therefore you don't probably have to worry about them too much. So what's gonna happen is that you're just gonna equally space until you get to this and then once you get here you're just gonna follow this around and where I'm gonna have you change the pattern is right in the first corner and then it's gonna change all the outside all the way around to the other side. So equally space your double or your single crochets down the sides of this area. So I'm continually equally spacing. Look how much stuff I'm covering up on the outside. It's actually working out to my favor. I'm not even gonna argue with that. If you can save sewing in things. It's awesome and look I just uh, have one that ended early but you can uh, just tug on them. It will tighten everything back up. Kind of neat. It's kind of lazy but it's kind of you know what we crocheters do. If you're gonna avoid extra steps why would you put yourself through that? So then you're just gonna pick up on the outside of the granny square. I would let these stragglers fall because of the color is now not gonna match and you're just going to match each one of the stitches that you have up until you get to the first corner Okay, so this is a chain one space if you remember. So you just fill those in with the um, your um, single crochets and continue to do that to the first corner. I'll see you there. Okay, I'm coming up near to the corner. So as I was uh, working through this I noticed that my edges were not sitting flat during uh, the prototype area. So what I had is that I decided that I would change the corner in these. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna come across and then back down and then across and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So as we hit the corners I want you to change the pattern slightly from this all the way around and so we're gonna come across and then back down and then just pick up the next one and then continue around so it creates the look. So in the corners I want you to put four single crochets. So two, this is three and four. In the tops of these other stitches I want you to push in one single crochet each and the exception where I changed it 
is right here. This is a chain one space. To get it to sit down flat I'd recommend putting in two single crochets and then move on. So then one single crochet in each of the next three stitches and then in the next chain one space put in two single crochets. And you're gonna do that across the tops of your motifs that you're going to hit. And this allows it to expand quite nicely and then to sit flat on your floor especially with using care in one pound. And of course if you have a better way all, by all means. I would have actually, I'm kind of, um, I'm ready, I'm kind of over this project at this time but I would consider if I had more time probably just changing this last one to be maybe a half double crochet or a double crochet but that's uh, completely up to you if you wanna do that. So in the next chain one space there's two. So I'm trying to get you just to where it dips down just to show you how to do that. It goes pretty quickly once you understand. So just one in each and then two into these chain one spaces. I decided to use green as my finale so I wanted to not use it when I was getting close to doing the interior so that I didn't have two greens too close to each other. Okay so we're hitting the next corner. So in the corner like before I want you to put in four single crochets and then move down just to the three only. Okay. Then I want you to put one right where it's joining and then move back up to the next one. So the next three in the next one. So one, two, three. So that's how I want you to handle where they're separating like that. And then in the corner again four single crochets and then one in each to the stitches and then two into there. So what I wanted to do is use that same idea and go all the way around. I'm now going to leave the rest of this tutorial for you and when I come back I'll just show you some uh, photography of my sample completely done. So I kind of lied. Here's the very end. I figured I'd better show you and I've just come all the way around. Didn't take me too long. I did a test trial before I film this to see how long it would take me to get around. So I'm actually pretty happy with it. So that's it. You're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet and what I highly recommend because this is gonna be underneath the tree you wanna go back through your work and put in your tap, uh, put in your uh, loose ends. So just pull that through. So any loose ends that you don't think you have control of then what I would do is just put it into a tapestry needle and just glide it back and forth three times. So just kind of turn it over to the back side. You can see I got tails to take care of. So here's my thought process is that I have not lied this down yet. So if it's not lying down properly I would strongly recommend that you wet block it. So just dampen it off a little bit and then just lay it flat to dry. Um, if it's not sitting flat you can also, I use a steamer. So then I just lay it flat and then I steam over top of it. Do not iron this yarn because it's acrylic and uh, you will melt it. So this is kind of a neat way to be able to do this. So I'm actually pretty excited about it. Now you can apply buttons to it but I'm too lazy to do that. So and honestly once you put down your presents anyway it's not gonna go anywhere. And uh, that's just something that you can decide for yourself. So take care of any loose ends that you may have and I will still take photography and I'll be back to show you that before we let you go today. Took some time but we pointed out That tomorrow isn't here right now baby An absent mind came to roam around Captured you in a foggy cloud baby